This is the top video game podcast from HorribleNight.com uh, of the week. HorribleNight.com of the week? Top video game podcast well, of the week. <laughs> Sometimes I forget that phrase. I mean, it's the one that completes the whole nonsensical name. Um, I'm your host, Justin Lacey. It is Thursday night, October 24, 2013. Coming at you live on Twitch TV slash Horrible Night. Joined this evening by one Andrew Cooper. I like to slow down when I say his name because it freaks him out when I call him Andrew. Yeah, it sounds weird. <laughs> I always feel like you're in trouble. <laughs> Everybody, uh, Coop and I... Why is he calling me Andrew? Coop and I work together, uh, and during the day, some of our project managers refer to him as Andrew, and uh, that always makes me laugh. It's like, oh, you're trying to be nice to him and suck up, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, you, don't, you don't know Coop. What has... Um, no. Yeah, I know you haven't much, had touch, much time for gaming, but um, well, we still have plenty to talk about, but outside of games, what's been going on? I've been getting back into music recording. I kind of, as you know, do it in spurts. Yeah. I'll get real motivated, and I have about a week to crank a bunch of stuff out <laughs> before I lose my motivation. But <laughs> I've been, uh, <laughs> my uh, my brother-in-law uh, wrote a punk song for his wife for their anniversary. Oh, and uh, I wonder where you two were up actually, to. Yeah, actually, he, he didn't. He didn't write it for their anniversary. He wrote it for their wedding um, mm-hmm. originally, and I helped him do like an acoustic version because we didn't have enough time to really record the whole thing. But he always wanted to redo it as a as the true punk song it was supposed to be. So we've been working on that. Um, like I've practiced with him a couple times. That's the first first mm-hmm. in a while that you've done like your original music and not just your chip tunes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's been fun. We've been going over to to Spencer's house and doing some of the recording. Um, but it's, it's been rough. Well, for one, I don't really listen to punk music. Yeah. So trying to come up with, uh, punk riffs, with some guitar. Yeah. With riffs that work with his song has been tough, but, um, well, that's me assuming it's coming together. You're, are you just playing guitar or, you do, or are you helping with anything else? I'm just playing guitar. Um, and he actually has another guy playing rhythm guitar already. Um, I'm just doing leads and solos and stuff. You're Kirk Hammett. Yeah, I'm Kirk Hammett. <laughs> so, um, interesting. So yeah, we're trying to crank that out. It's his anniversary is next week, so we kind of got to get it together. We started recording yesterday. Oh shit! Two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you... <laughs> but we we've been we've been practicing all well. They've been practicing all month. I've practiced like three times. So I was trying to get my stuff up and running again here at home, so I can just try and lay some stuff down here because I, I actually do better by myself than when I'm sitting in a room with three guys sure. watching me waiting for me to do something awesome. Sure. But, uh, but yeah, it's kind of gotten me in the mood. Um, so hopefully after I get this done, I'll, I'll keep going. Well, based on your video game out. selection lately, maybe you should just live stream you fucking around with your guitar. Yeah. I thought about it actually. It, it sounds cool in theory, but it'd probably be really boring. <laughs> Uh, I've been spending most of my time getting ready for our charity marathon, um, which will be next Saturday, Saturday, November 2nd, from noon to noon, which I discovered is 25 hours and not 24, so we'll be making adjustments <laughs> accordingly, because daylight savings time. Um, I can't remember if, I don't, I doubt Europe has anything like that, but I'll be curious to see if that, what that does to our, our European audience, if they, uh, um, tune in and expect us to uh, stop playing and we keep going for an extra hour so um, I don't yeah. know we were we were dragging ass last year <laughs> about hour 22 oh, yeah. so I'll be curious to see how we do but um, we've got we've got more gamers this year and I'm excited about the uh, uh, the game jam p- portion uh, we've got four or five game developers that'll be uh, working on a few different games we'll check in on that throughout the evening um, but I was over in our new location um and just basically testing uh, a bunch of different uh, network speeds and just th- different things could pop up during the show. I think we're set. Right now, we're just trying to nail down all the games. I have a list of 80 potential charity marathon games that I'm trying to nail down. Um, and that hasn't even really scratched the surface of the of the retro games. Um, so um, look forward to seeing a, a bunch of at least... Uh, local local multiplayer games, and then I think we'll break off. and I'd like you to do like a Dark Souls section with our full yeah. audience, and just um, I think that kind of stuff should be fun. But um, um, yeah, we that'll will... go well. I haven't played in a while. 
it, <laughs> and it'll, you'll have an, a, a nice supportive audience, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, we won't be assholes because we're taking donations for Child's Play. Why would we be Maybe jerks? We could, we could do like bets. So just yeah. have bets against like if I'm going to beat bosses or not and if you lose oh, and you have fun. to donate money. That could be fun. Like, yeah. Yeah, I could. I, I'd, I'd make some wagers for and against you and if you uh, fail or whatnot, I can I can donate that money to Child's Play. That could be that could be interesting because I always end up be getting careful. Money. I always end up giving money at the end after donate. we've got our final tally. But uh, but yeah, that could be. I could have like an ongoing. I'd, I'd watch bet. Your, I'd watch your wagers against failures. You might <laughs> want to bet low. <laughs> well, it depends on the game, but uh, yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, no, I'm hoping I'm hoping we have more energy this year. I know the first year, I thought it went really well, but and I'm hoping this is more like that because you know last year there were just what like four of us in the yeah, room, four or five of us, yeah, and there just wasn't as much. I mean, we were all kind of sitting on a couch and there wasn't as much going on. Where the year before, when we were at Netheads, it just seemed like constant action all the time, which I think helped you get going a little more. So yeah, hopefully got, with more people, we've got some ideas for like. I don't know if we'll do the Lego challenge or not, but like some tabletop gaming. Um, we'll have other machines going on. We'll, we'll be live streaming from one machine, but we might have other games like uh, Minecraft going on in the background, and then we'll check in with the Game Jam guys, and um, that should keep the energy level up. We'll just keep rotating people in and out. So last year there was a lot of pressure for all four of us to play the entire 24 hours, but I think we'll do more of like two or three at a time and rotating around. So um, it should be fun yeah. either way. It's for a good cause, so... Um, it looks like I'm getting recruited into writing music for all the Game Jam games. So probably. We'll see how much I actually, how much I get to play. <laughs> uh, we'll start you off with Dark Souls. You'll get pissed off, and then just write music the rest of the time. Nice. <laughs> write some angsty music. This is our weekly interactive podcast where I post uh, qu- questions of the week up on our Facebook page. Um, and if you're in the audience, you can uh, throw out your answers, and we'll talk through those alongside our own. Um, but, uh, we start off with game of the week and, uh, my game of the week, uh, since I just, I'm on this mission to complete as many games as possible, uh, before we get into our game of the year discussion. And, uh, after finishing Tomb Raider, Bioshock Infinite was up on the list and I live streamed, uh, my first four hours back into that game. Um, and one thing I realized too, um... Well, when I jumped back into Tomb Raider, I didn't realize I was playing that game on hard difficulty until I just died a lot. I mean, I I I die quite a bit. I you know I think uh, it actually helps my live streams with how inept I am at video games sometimes. But <laughs> I was dying more than usual, um, and I had that game to set to heart. And then I came to discover that um, when I stopped playing Bioshock Infinite, I was also playing that game on hard. Um, so I restarted and I, I'm playing it on normal this time because I really just want to get through the story and I, especially the parts that I've played through before. Uh, <coughs> I got about. They four. make a pretty big jump between normal and hard in their games. Yeah, those guys become some serious bullet sponges. And yeah, I mean, I think it's really fun. I think Bioshock Infinite's really fun on hard, but that's not what um, what I'm playing it for this time. I wouldn't say you know normal's not easy, but it is easier because. When I first when I started running into the the mini bosses that that, that that crow guy at first, like I remember dumping tons of ammo into him and uh, he went down pretty easily. So, um, yeah. But uh, so uh, I recommend normal if you want to breeze through it, but do give it a try on hard because I have a feeling, you know, Halo always had that that veteran setting that said this is what you should play it at, this is what we designed it for, and I feel kind of like that's what hard is on Bioshock Infinite, like people that complain a little bit about its gameplay, like try it on hard yeah. or, or bump it up a bit and the challenge ramps up pretty quick. I did read a, a blog post though that uh, they recommend, or it was meant to play on normal, like that's what. Really? Well, it, I, and I think it's mainly because um, they want you to focus on the story and yeah. it gets a lot harder on hard and I, people you know, are more concerned with just completing it and everything. But, but yeah, they did actually, I think, I think Ken said that, that the, the game was written to play in normal mode, but mm. they put hard mode in the, there's an even harder mode after you beat it that you can unlock. Yeah. That's there just for the challenge. Because I mean, Bioshock 
until you kind of figure out some of its tricks, the original Bioshock was pretty difficult. Like I remember, yeah. And then System Shock Two, that that game's hard. <laughs> so, um, you know, but it, you know, I like I like playing it on hard where you get to really experiment with your different powers and try just different combinations of clear rooms. And I think that's when when that game's combat shines. It's when you're just kind of toying with everything and yeah, um, rather than just you know, right now I feel like I can just. Uh, run in and sh- gun everybody down, or stay back and snipe them, and um, kind of takes care of business. But but I'm also, you know, barely halfway into the game. I think I'm probably about a third of the way through, and it, yeah. I'm sure it'll ramp up. I haven't even really run into very many special enemies. But um, but it you definitely it definitely has some areas where you have to use the environment a little more, mm-hmm. like some battles with the rails and stuff. I the rails are so so awesome. Like they are. They did a good job with the rails. You and I took a trip to Cedar Point recently, and I, I don't know. It just I was <laughs> yeah. I thought Bioshock. Yeah, I was riding those rails. I'm like, oh, they need to they need to have a they need to have a Bioshock ride where you get a sky hook. That'll be safe. Yeah, they just strap <laughs> something to your arm and you hang on. <laughs> I don't think that would work. But you you played through this game like right after it came out and kind of blew through it. Um, yeah. What kind of I sticks? Pretty quick. What kind of sticks with you? Like spoiler free. Like looking back at that game, is it one of your better games of the year? Um, you know, when I first when I first played it, I thought that it was going to be. Um, but I don't know. I I think it kind of suffered from. It had so much hype, and I try not to let the hype affect because it's it's a great game. I don't. I didn't. After I played it, I didn't have the same feeling I did after I played the first one. Because you know, I remember hearing about the first Bioshock. I got through the end. I was just like, man, that game was ridiculous. Um, and Bioshock Infinite's good, and the story was really good. They did some cool stuff with it. Um, but I don't. I don't know. I actually had more fun with Tomb Raider, which I played right after Bioshock Infinite. Um, but it was kind of. I don't know. It was kind of different, though. I, I really like the action stuff and and Tomb Raider, like a lot of the movie cinematic stuff. Um, and, you know, I'm not super familiar with the, the Tomb Raider series. That's, that's actually the first one I've played oh, through. I realize that. Yeah, I mean, I played some of the older ones, like maybe an hour, but I never really got into Tomb Raider. But um, I don't know. It's it's a contender for, for my game of the year, but I have to... It's definitely not a easy selection, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But no, the, I mean, it, it was good to the end. I... I I got to. It didn't end how I thought it was going to end. Yeah, I'm, I guess I'm, is a good way of saying it, which which is expected. You know, it's Bioshock; it never ends how you think it's going to end. Yeah, I'm looking um, forward to actually that. participating in that conversation at some point this year. Yeah, that's why I'm. You know, we'll get to it later, but I was kind of excited that you were playing it so we could finally talk about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I had it. I had to kind of. You know, it was one of those. It it got to a point and it. I had to sit there and think about what happened for a little while to try and see if I actually understood what just happened uh, <laughs> in it, which, you know, is good and bad. Um, but, you know, it definitely had me thinking for a while, and I actually went and did some research to see what other people thought of the end of the game, too, um, which I guess is, is good. That's probably what they wanted you to do. Yeah. But no, it's, it was a good game. Cool. Yeah, I will hopefully um, get that wrapped up here in the next couple of weeks because the games are about to start coming out. Um I'm actually crossing my fingers that, um, well, I'll get to that. Never mind. Um, your game of the week, however, um, I've been giving <laughs> you a hard time to your face and behind your back about playing Dead Island because I know yeah. what your game library looks like. And I'm just like, what the f- <laughs> Why are you deciding to play that now when there are plenty of other games to play? I, I don't know. Um, I So... I got through a couple games that I was that I was working on, and I hit that that point of, you know, my library is huge, and I have probably 250 games that I haven't played. <laughs> um, you know, if we go all the way through the backlog, but it's it's just that overwhelming decision of what to play, and when that happens, I pick the most random stuff, as you can tell. Yeah. Um, and it's it's probably been more of a it's more of a time killer trying to I'm playing it while I'm trying to decide what to play. Yep. Definitely. Um, because I, cause realistically I can stop playing it at any time and not really care, but it's, it's been fun. I mean, it's, it's not a good game, but <laughs> it, uh, 
you know, I, I started, well, when I first started playing it, I had it on PC, or I'd have it on PC. I had it on Xbox first. Um, and I started the character that's good with guns and then got a little ways into the game and figured out that you don't really get guns very quickly and bullets are very scarce. Mm-hmm. So I stopped playing it. Yeah, because you, like, like, you like guns. Yeah, because like, it's like I want to shoot. I want to shoot these zombies and there are no bullets. So I stopped playing and then didn't touch it again until you know we played at the marathon, which kind of really burnt me out on it. Yeah, I'm not really sure what we were doing. That was. So we were just tired and we're in trucks and trucks are it, funny. When you're yeah. been up for thirty hours. So. Uh, so yeah, I was done with it for a while, but I don't know. I don't know why it was still installed on my computer, and I saw it there, and I was like, "Hey, maybe I'll try somebody else." And I tried this little Asian girl who's good with knives, and it's actually really fun. She has a rage mode where she goes crazy and just starts cutting heads off, um, which is pretty satisfying. So nice. That's well, it's, we'll, it's my buffer. It's my buffer game. I got to figure out what to play. Yeah, I was gonna say, chat, help us out. Other games that came out this year that Coop needs to play before the end of the year. Uh, throw them out while I uh, go over our community answers of the week for their game of the week. Um, can I have a vote for what I play next? Yeah, well, we can recap that at the... You decide. <laughs> it's going to stream it, probably, so be careful. Yeah. yeah uh, Aaron's watch me play. game of the week. Uh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Pokemon Y. Uh, X and Y, just Pokemon. Oh, for some reason, I thought he got X. Oh, well. I don't know the difference, so it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> lots of Pokemon talk on our last two podcasts, so you can go. We're not talking about Pokemon. We don't know. You and I, I yeah, that would be an interesting conversation because we don't know what the... I don't know anything about Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, Verdean's Game of the Week. It looks like he's engrossed in Arma 3, which I have not tried. I heard it's actually... So Arma is like super you know, military simulator. But I've heard it's just, like, kind of fun for how janky it is, too. So I've been a little bit more curious about that game lately. Um, Justin Gifford and Nate Orlo um, are playing a bunch of Dragon Age Origins. Did you try that? I for some reason, I think you might have. I did. Um, I don't remember which one it was. <laughs> I played one for a little bit on PC. Okay. Yeah, okay. It was maybe... Maybe two. No, I never, I never, two. never finished it, but I enjoyed the dozen or so, dozen or so hours I spent with it. And yeah, it's a big game. Gifford's gonna be busy for a while. Um, <laughs> and then from chat, we've got Krug Dog who's playing Mountain Blade Warband. That sounds medieval to me. Um, and Matt's joking, but I'm gonna assign his name to Candy Box too. So. <laughs> um. I guess my suggestion, we'll come back to see if chat has any suggestions for you, Coop, but Saints Row 4, man. Saints Row 4 and Enter the Dominatrix, that DLC just came out. So, oh, yeah. Um, I think you should waste some time in Saints Row 4. I probably should. I started it. I'm. Uh, oh, you played on the plane or whatever, didn't you? I did. <laughs> I started it on my way back from Germany. I, had a, I preloaded it before I left because it came out while I was over there. And uh, it actually, I was expecting it to not work, but I put Steam in offline mode and had it preloaded and was just hoping that it would be smart enough to know what day it was and let it work, and it, it totally did. So I'm going to laugh when your brother, who was on your family sharing account, beats that game. <laughs> beats all my do. games. Yeah. He did beat it. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, he finished it. He finished it in like three days. Maybe I should have him on the show. We should have. Yeah, he's he's actually he's blowing through my library. He was playing this. He was playing Dishonored all day today. So uh, he's probably finished all 250 of those games that you haven't touched. Probably. Um, <laughs> uh, HorribleNight.com. Um, yeah. What you What you notice on the site recently? Um. Well, you know, I go to it every day and read every single article. Sure. But uh, of course, I. Uh, I love that video Ethan just did on the uh, uh, character the games forgot the strong female character. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's I don't even really know what to say about it. It's pretty hilarious. <laughs> I, just the just the fact that it's about this character that this girl that just punches everybody mixed with the entire time you're just watching shots of video of her punching things, but she's like 
I don't know, a good five feet away from him every time she hits him. That that side of it made me laugh. And I don't know. That guy's just entertaining. It's a good, like, I don't know, 80 seconds of her just punching dudes and then I know. Uh, well, and the whole time I was watching it, I was thinking of his uh, Dead Island playthrough where he just kept saying, punching, punching, punching. <laughs> <laughs> that's, all, that's all I heard in my head this whole time. I just see this girl and it's punching, punching, you should, punching. He should have mixed like that in for the vocal track with that. Uh, wonderful music he chose, but uh, yeah, that would have that would have been funny. I, I I love that he put that video together. He's gonna try to do more of those little short um, little montage videos uh, coming up. But um, what surprised me about it, and Ethan and I kind of have this problem. Like Ethan does not like it when games journalism takes itself too seriously, and um, he was basic. He put this video together essentially to pretend to join the conversation about strong uh female characters in games and um he was he's not poking fun at the co- at the conversation he's poking fun at that everybody thinks they need to have an opinion on it and everybody seems to contribute to the conversation and um i felt bad when some of the comments didn't really get that he posted this more as a joke like it's yeah. not i guess that the topic's not funny but seriously he says she's a strong female character because she can just punch really well and i just i don't know that concept to me is hilarious so yeah we lost the stream for a second that'll be awkward. anyway Uh-oh. i was just saying i was just laughing at him going through all that footage of her punching everybody but we're back uh, we're back we're back just in time for my horrible night highlight is um another another hey article um so what I've done recently with these culture posts is um, every day on the on our Tumblr page, which is loot.horriblenight.com, I'm posting lots of lots of cultural links, and um, but one of those I'll uh, I'll highlight on the site during our Hey series. So this was a Hey listen uh, because the video game music bundle is back, which um, is kind of similar to the game the indie game bundles that are out there, except. Um, all this money that you're you're spending on these uh, music collections just goes directly to the artists themselves. So it's just trying to promote video game music. But they put together the game music bundle of The Damned, which was a, just a bunch of horror soundtrack games. And the one that got my attention was the fact that they threw in the Dead Space 1 soundtrack, which is just yeah. some really, really moody shit. And um, Amnesia's in there, um, and... Limbo and uh, just there's 14 albums total. Um, it um it, it it was a pretty pretty awesome collection. Those music bundles have always been pretty pretty awesome. I mean, you get a lot of a lot of good albums for what you pay for it. Yeah, it's like you get. I think it said if you pay a dollar, you get like four or five of them, and then for five bucks, you get all 14. So and you can give them okay. more. So and them yeah, but it's a. It's a pretty awesome collection and good timing for them because um, they. It's got to be tough to put those bundles together to get the rights to all those albums to sell them that way, but um, I think they're doing a good thing promoting uh, video game musicians. So. Yep. All right. Worst of the week in gaming. Um, I'm actually going to start with community this time. Um, Aaron's worst of the week is uh, some article that I haven't read. Uh, Great. Granny loses her super rare in-game sword through enchantment. <laughs> yeah, I saw that too. I wanted to look that story up and find some more about that. Let's we'll see what happens. What game is this? She's playing Lineage. You can enchant in-game items to enhance them. If you're unsuccessful, though, the item perishes. Um, oh, so she knew that it was going to happen and got pissed because she no, was chance. There's always a chance, but she tried to enchant an extremely rare sword and failed. And so she sued the, the video game maker. <laughs> oh man, oh, that's funny. I see when I first when I first read the summary, I thought that maybe it glitched or something, and I was like, okay, that'd make me mad too. But if you knew there's a chance, that's you're just gambling. The woman claimed that she accidentally tried to enchant the sword, adding that she would never actively try to enchant this item. Doing so, she claimed would risk sure. its destruction. Do you get to sue for an accident that you're responsible for? That's that's really funny though. Uh, I won't say what site that's on though, just for the record. Uh, <laughs> um, actually, no Verdian Verdian has a really good one here, um, and I don't know if you saw this earlier, but 
Uh, Wild Game Studios is trying to censor the most popular viewed review of their game, Day One, Gary's Incident, which um, because the view was pretty negative. So this was a video review. Um, what the fuck is this? WTF is this from the cynical Brit um, who has a ton of uh, YouTube followers. And um, so what happened was he... You know, sent his request uh, to review this game. They gave him a review code. They know who he is. Everything's good. He does his video review and kind of bashes the game. And they so they went through YouTube's um, copyright claim systems and got the video taken down immediately. Because that's just the way that YouTube has to work around the laws right now is anytime a, uh, somebody claims that they own that content, they have to take it down and ask questions later. Um and this is becoming a bigger and bigger issue because they're, you know, YouTube video gaming on YouTube has obviously been surging in popularity, and there's a lot of a lot of people out there that make their livelihood off of their YouTube videos and the ads that they put on there. And uh, so it was really really interesting to see um, Cynical Brit. Um, he responded to this, posted basically a video that explained the whole situation and why this is just shady business on the development studio's behalf. And eventually they uh, rescinded the claim and the video's back up. But it, I think it brought to light a lot of the problems where YouTube needs to adjust that ability to for people to just take down your, your videos immediately. Yeah. It's, um, I don't know. We've, we've had a few weird copyright claims with some of, um, some of our, our playthrough videos and our highlight clips. But, um, you know, we... We're not at a point where we monetarily rely on a horrible night, but if if we had to take that stuff more seriously, oh, you better believe I'd be uh, even more lit up than this guy was. And uh, oh, yeah, uh, but yeah, check out Cynical Brit's video explaining the whole situation. I think it'll it'll um, um, kind of bring the light the seriousness of the situation. Um, let's see, other worst of the week, uh, Gifford. He's been talking on Twitter and uh, was kind of upset this week. He started seeing that after all the good work that his friends at Fat Ugly and Slutty have done over the years to kind of promote, um, to call out bad behavior in online gaming, he's just seen that it's not really doing very much and that he would uh, he needs to see a bigger change in that. So he's just kind of dismayed by online gaming still. Um you know, I haven't really, you know, we, we just kind of play with our crew. That's one nice thing about having a big Horrible Night crew and our community. We just kind of play with, play games with each other. And, uh, but because I still, like, I built up, you know, my frustration with playing public games a long time ago. So I still have no, you know, desire to really jump out there and, and deal with some of the bullshit that, like, is still going on. <laughs> Oh man, I, I just looked over at chat at right at the right time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is. <laughs> yeah, it, it remind it, it reminded me of exactly what it was like playing, uh, <laughs> playing in in pubs, old Counter Strike days. But yeah, I'm the same way. I, you know, that's a that's a tough thing to combat. I mean, there's twelve year olds are always there. They never yeah. go away, and it's you know you you may correct some people on as they grow up, but new ones just come it's it's a it's a never ending cycle so i just don't play with them right i well, just i don't play with anyone <laughs> <laughs> yeah you and i have been we've been playing a lot lot, lot more solo games anyway but um yeah i'd love to play more multiplayer it's i, I mean i don't play at the same time as anybody else i guess yeah it's hard to schedule things i mean hell we um well we had our minecraft server open to the public for all of a week or maybe a weekend and uh, people jumped in there and started wrecking shit. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I like Giffers kind of, he's trying to do a call to action. Like if you see that or you're around that type of bad behavior, like don't be passive about it. Even if it's not offending the person, like uh, people need to take more action with it. You know, we, you know, my, my solution has been just, I, I just play with friends and, and people from our community. So, um, but yeah, it's something's got to change it eventually. Um, I'll be curious to see if the reputation systems on these on the new consoles have anything help it at all. Um, and, and Valve's always been trying to do stuff to get bad gamers reported. But 
Uh, we'll see. Now, do they have? I mean, I haven't played anything like Call of Duty in a long time. Do they have any way of, you know, voting to kick somebody off a server? Because that's what we used to do, you know, back in the day. It's all the servers that I played Counter Strike on were all run by people. So there was usually somebody in there that was an admin, and if somebody was being a dick, you just you could throw up a vote, and if enough people clicked yes, it kicked them off the server. And that that helped a lot. I mean, it kept. Yeah, I mean, I'll I would just ban people from my Xbox live list but um and report them but just never really knew where that stuff went and i know you know, yeah you can mute them on xbox and i'm sure you can kick you can boot them if you're the admin of the the pc server but the uh the hosted servers um that's another another issue but yeah that's how long it's been yeah. since i've um dove into multiplayer gaming of, of of that variety because i don't even know that answer of, of where they're standing with um kicking players but they're trying i know it's always a topic of conversation when the new call of duty and battlefield come out and it's been a topic of conversation with these new consoles um that your reputation will follow you around a little bit more yeah yeah i think the last game i played online actively with people i didn't know was the gears of war 3 beta didn't you play a little bit of um uh, counter-strike go recently Oh yeah, yeah. I did play some Counter Strike Go. I have I have a friend who streams as well, mm-hmm. and uh, somebody I used to play Counter Strike with, and uh, she started playing Go, and we did a few ranked matches, which it was fun. I I we didn't I haven't had any problems with Go in that aspect, but um, but it was kind of. I mean, we we played online, but we knew our entire team because you go if you do the ranked matches, you go in with a team of five, so. And you can't hear the people on the other side in a ranked match, so it kind of. Yeah. yeah, you're playing with your friends again. Yeah, Funny. yeah, playing with my friends. <laughs> uh, what is your what's your worst of the week, Coop? Um, I mean, it's not really that bad, but I was a little bummed when I read that Watch Dogs was delayed, mainly because I pre-ordered a PS4 and I don't really know what I'm going to play on it. Um, <laughs> I mean. Are you I, are you I wavering knew. in that decision? We've already had one soldier fall. No, no, I'll still get it. Um, because overall, I think I'll play it more. Um, but yeah, I was, you know, I wasn't excited about the the lineup to begin with at launch, mm. and I was on the fence with with uh, Watch Dogs anyway because you know it's available on PC, so. I was like, oh, should I get it on PC or should I get it on PS4? And I, I kind of convinced yeah. myself to go PS4 just to have something cool to play on yeah. it. Um, and it did have some extra gameplay, so you know that side of it was cool too. But, but yeah, so now it's delayed. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll download Warframe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it'll be starting new. It'll be the indie game stuff. It'll be like, yeah, yeah it'll be those free to play games. You know, I don't know if Planet Side Two is going to be ready <laughs> at their launch, but just trying out some of that stuff. Um, I will have plenty to plenty to mess around with on my PS4, but I don't really. There isn't that launch title that has me excited. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah, more or I mean, less. I, I'm more or less getting it because I know I'm going to get one anyway, and I'm like, I'm getting one in the fall, and I'm probably getting one in the spring. So. Yeah, I'm, I'll probably do the same too, and you know, I'm. I think enough of us have or pre-order the PS4 is a, um, that's probably going to that's going to be the console I get destiny on um and the beta for that opens up in January if you pre-ordered it you can get into the beta oh, yeah yeah I forgot so, you, you did that yeah yeah I did the pre-order so I could play it so I, I know I have something to play after Christmas cool. um but uh but yeah no I'm not I'm not going to bail on it cool. so uh, you know I don't know that there's anything on the Xbox I'm that excited about either Dead Rising looks cool yep um that's actually but, the uh, Ironically, the uh, launch game I'm most excited for now, but I yeah. probably won't be playing it unless some sort of money miracle happens. <laughs> It'll still be cool in the spring. <laughs> <laughs> Grimmies just might not be able to acknowledge them until then. We might have to like delay next gen Grimmy Awards until like lump in the 2013 games with with the rest of 2014. We'll get we'll get creative yeah. there if we. Yeah, because most of us will we probably won't get to play those. So, um, so yeah, I'm trying to clear out these games before a bunch of new games start showing up. Which next few weeks that um, things get a little bit busy. Um, 
So I've been kind of holding out hope, which is uh, against Batman Arkham Origins, um, which, first of all, it's kind of weird it's being released on a Friday. Because I don't... Yeah, that is weird. You know, Nintendo has weird release dates. They do Friday, Saturday, Sunday releases. And usually, but usually, you know, the big the big game of the week comes out on Tuesday, um, especially something of Batman's level. Um, so it's kind of weird to have to wait to find out, and I'm just I'm kind of annoyed that there's been no early reviews because I need to I need to know if this game's worth playing, uh, or should I just you know go back and play two to three hours of Arkham City and get my Batman fix before spending 60 bucks on another game. But I don't know. I've been watching the trailers yeah. and stuff recently, been getting kind of hyped, and I'm just really anxious right now and waiting the entire week to figure out if this is something I need to work into my schedule. It's been kind of frustrating. I kind of like the idea of a Friday release because then you get the whole weekend to play it. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I can understand. Why isn't it out now? It's ready. It's just sitting in boxes. Could it came out on Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> but you can think of it the other way. It could come out next Tuesday and you get out on Friday instead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just, I think it's more, I've been more concerned with the no early reviews because usually that's a bad yeah. sign. But, but it's also, it's, yeah, it's just so weird. And I don't like it when things are, it, now is not the time to be weird. This is the time of the year where I need to know what games are out when they're going to hit so I can, I can make my schedule. But these games I'm not yeah. sure I'm going to buy makes things a little bit difficult so like, do i need to finish bioshock infinite infinite right now so speaking of bioshock infinite you do uh your best of the week <laughs> yeah you playing bioshock infinite finally so we can talk about it <laughs> <laughs> i try i mean I think I, I think I tried to get you and josh and ethan uh because you all kind of blew through it in that first couple of weeks to, to talk about that ending but but yeah i feel yeah. bad for anybody that has waited on me to have a conversation with the about, about that game because i remember you know i remember the days when i first got my xbox where i i'd never bought any games and you know i was the one that never played anything and uh you know you still buy stuff before me but i, I feel like i'm finishing games before you yeah yeah see I, I beat tomb raider I'm just getting getting more and more distracted with indie games. Like yeah. every week, yeah, you has, buy a lot more indie games than I do. Every week has some five or ten dollar game that I was like, oh, I want to try that, and it always yeah. cuts into my my bigger playthrough. I need to be more disciplined in 2014. We'll figure that out. Um, let's see. Best of the week from chat. We've got Aaron's is um. The Stanley Parable developer has politely and easily handled people's discomfort with an image that he put in the game that was, uh, some people were calling racist. So, um, there is a, um, an image that, <laughs> actually it's on, it's on his link. Uh, I'll post that for everybody. But yeah, there was a questionable image that was, it's basically talking about the difference in choice between, you know, helping a third world, co world country and, like, killing all of its civilians. So the illustration that he had was a white man lighting a cigarette a cigarette of a young <laughs> black boy and then a the same white man setting the black boy on fire. So, mm. um, but yeah, he's received a couple different complaints on, of it and has removed and patched it from the game and apologized and uh, just... Uh, Aaron said handled handled it professionally so um, that's a really fun game and definitely I'm sure was not his intent with that with that image uh, based on some of the, the other humor in the game but I can understand why people might be a little taken aback from that image especially if you're playing that game with kids so um, for Dean's uh, best of the week is that Armor 3 released the first episode of its single player campaign and they're dev build so they are building out the full single player campaign there if you couldn't tell Verdian, a big fan of armor 3 um let's see that's that's pretty much it from chat am i missing everybody oh actually i forgot all about ethan because he posted in the wrong damn place anybody <laughs> should know better come on ethan um, he's fired all of his are kind of interrelated so his game of the week is skyrim he's been playing a lot of skyrim worst of the week is that oblivion won't work on his computer <laughs> Um, and, <laughs> and actually, yeah, and, and his best of the week is that he beat Skyrim, which he's put like 200 hours in that game. I guess he must have just finally seen, um, he was playing through the Dragonborn DLC, so he must have just seen that through. 
Uh, but he's kind of sad that it's over. But he'll keep playing. I wouldn't worry about him. Um, yeah. My... He still plays New Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> he'll get sucked into all those. Uh, my best of the week is all these weird Halloween releases and mods that are coming out all of a sudden. Like, I'm not used to seeing this happen, especially especially across genres like it has been this week. Um, first, there was Monaco, um, the multiplayer heist game, um, added a zombie mode to their game, which I was just kind of like, okay, um, you know, that's been a while since they've updated that game, and I didn't necessarily attribute the Halloween right away, but should have. Um, but I'm si- excited about that. They're adding stuff to that game. And then Don't Starve added a Screecher mod, which is just more of a horror mod for it. And then today, I saw that Nintendo is going to release Super Castlevania Four on the Wii U eShop on Halloween. So, all nice. kinds of Halloween goodies. More of this, more of this, please. This is, I'm probably going to live stream Super Castlevania 4. Or put it, it might, might be my solo game during the charity marathon. Who knows? Borderlands had that uh, Zombie TK yep. add-on too. They have that one. And then uh, I still need to go back and play Undead Nightmare from Red Dead Redemption. That's like one of my yeah. bigger, bigger regrets this gen. I started that. Um, I forget what I was playing. Oh, I started playing it right after uh, I played Vanquish, and I couldn't take the pace change because Van- <laughs> Van- Vanquish is just like, you know, nonstop action. Um, and then yeah, jumping back into Undead Nightmare is a lot slower. And yeah, it was cool. I just it was yes. the pace drove me nuts, so I had to switch to something else, and I forgot to go back to it. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. I, yeah, that's a good point. I don't think I could jump right back into that right now. Like, you, I'd almost need to play half a dozen hours of Red Dead because it does have a certain a certain pace to it. Um, compared yeah. To, you know the other zombie games we've been playing, but oh uh, yeah, yeah, I am. Um, I am a f- big supporter of Halloween mods, especially to games that uh, I don't. I don't know why Monaco decided to add a zombie mode, but awesome. So why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> all right coop have you decided on instead of playing dead island what are you going to play next what i don't know we didn't get any votes in chat did we no well, saints row what, what did, games did you say oh you said saints row yeah i do need to play saints row especially since i've started it let's um, see what else has come out i actually probably have yeah let me let me pull up my games list here because i have like I probably have four or five hours in Saints Row. Mm-hmm. Um, and you were just playing the original Dead Island. You weren't playing Riptide, right? Yeah, I don't have Riptide. It was just the original. Did you play any of the the Walking Dead? Because I would highly recommend you play The Wolf Among Us. That's only two to three hours, though. Uh, no, actually, I haven't played The Walking Dead yet. I installed go. it. You should, started it. You should do Maybe that. Maybe that should be it. You should do Maybe that. Maybe I should play The Walking Dead Saints Row. Mm-hmm. Saints Row, Walking Dead. Yeah. What other dumb purchases have Christopher I made? Christopher hated Saints Row 4. Why'd you hate it? I don't know how you could hate Saints I mean, I still contend that people need to play um, Saints Row 3. Like, that is, like, the epitome. But, um... Yeah. Uh, Saints Row 4 is fun in its own in its own way, so... Uh, you could play... I do need to finish... Uh... I need to finish Devil May Cry. Yes, that would be. I would. I, that's up there in my games of the year still. So, please, because you're right. I know where you are in that game, and it it's about yeah. to take off for you. So, all right. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm at. A, I need to power through it then, because yeah. I was getting kind of bored. Yep. Um, not really bored, but no, I know. I know exactly. What it, you're it started. Yeah, it started to lose me where I'm at. Um, hmm. so maybe I'll try that. All right. uh, I'm going to finish Hard Reset, though. I think one more live stream, and I'll beat Hard Reset. Cool. It's I, been fun. I need I need to finish up Shadow Warrior. Maybe you should play Shadow Warrior. Yeah. I think I have a Steam coupon. They've been handing out the Steam coupons like crazy. Oh, yeah. I got a, I had a bunch of 10% ones, and then I got a 25% one from there. So. Yeah. Um, well, I, I used one for uh, that game we're playing tonight, Foul Play, 33%. Mm-hmm. Um, last thing, chat, you, uh, I'd like your answers on this one too, but if everything was out now, um, and you had the choice, would you spend money on a new console 
or like the full blown Oculus Rift. Because I actually heard a rumor this week that they're working on a 4K resolution Oculus Rift prototype. Because everybody's been saying that the 1080p all up in your face doesn't look as good, but it's still it does an look. awesome experience. But um, I, I used I used one finally. When did you? What? Um, when did they this had, happen? They had they had one at GDC in Europe. Mm-hmm. Um, I played Hawken on one, and it is it you when it's all up in your face. It's the the graphics aren't as crisp. You don't the edges look jagged. Mm. And it's uh, it looks a lot lower resolution, which it's because what it's if it's a 1080p Oculus, it still has to split the resolution between the two screens. Yep. So you're not actually getting. Which, if you think about it, I mean, even a, on a 1080p TV, if you stick your face in front <laughs> of it, you see all the line. It doesn't look very good. So. But aside from being picky, was that awesome? It's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's. It. <laughs> Yeah, I, it's it's awesome. That's all I can really say. I think horror games are going to be ridiculous yeah. on it. I, um, I mean, you you actually feel kind of queasy when you're playing it because you know, in in Hawking, you're flying around in the air. So I was climbing, you know, about as high as I could, and then jumped off, and you can look down, and it actually kind of <laughs> makes, makes you motion it. sickness. Nice. Yeah, you, you kind of forget. You you lose your orientation on you know where you're actually at. It's it's cool. I um, I'm not sure how long you could actually play it. But uh, I'd be it's, curious it's, to see what our tolerance ends up being for those, and they'll have to design yeah. around that too. Um, chat's pretty uh, being pretty funny right now. Uh, Matt's gonna spend money on a house instead of an Oculus Rift. Um, <laughs> let's see, Krug Dog's all all about the Oculus, and actually, I misread Matt because he said this cardboard box is getting kind of ratty. I thought he made his own Oculus Rift out of a cardboard box at first. <laughs> um, Jordan has a point. He's saying he might buy, he'd buy a better PC, um, and because he doesn't want any pink eye from the Oculus. Would <laughs> um, you let somebody else play your Oculus? Yeah. Now that I think about it, that's, that's, I put one that's been on a lot of heads. Well, that's what they're saying. They're saying at PAX that it was responsible for some pink eye. So somebody rubbed their butt oh, yeah, on that. that Oculus, and uh, it might have been Aaron. Aaron says he rubs his face on everything. I don't know what he does with his butt though. Um, and then, uh, but but yeah, I I am more excited about the Oculus Rift than I am either of the consoles right now. So, if I did you see that game? Yeah. Did you see that game we were uh, looking at in the office today? We were the uh, shoot. What was it called? I think it's called Alone. That, Is that right? Yeah, Alone. That Kickstarter where yeah. you know it, you're actually playing a game inside the game. So, so it looks like you're sitting on your couch. Patrick Klepek on Giant Bomb did a big like he does. He plays a bunch of horror games. Um, on his live streams, and he demoed all of the Oculus Rift horror games he'd get his hands on. And he he said um, when he was playing all the other games, like when something scares the shit out of you, and you're wearing the Oculus Rift, your first instinct is to rip the Oculus Rift off Rift off your head. Oh yeah. But when you're playing alone, which so this game takes place, you're sitting on a couch, and you look around the room, and then on the TV <laughs> I, is the I feel game like you that get you're up playing. and run. And he said when shit started happening in that game, he would look around the room. He wouldn't he didn't have that instinct to rip off the, the visor. I thought that was sounded really interesting. Um, interesting. But yeah, just that whole concept of you know, playing a game within a game, just ah, where does that stop? But uh, I figured, you know, if if they could make the room that you're sitting in convincing enough, like it I feel like it'd be real easy for somebody to just like stand up and take off running if something freaked him out. Yeah. Yeah. Which could be pretty hilarious. <laughs> cool. I think that's going to do it for top video game podcast of the week for this week. Um, we will see, we will see you all in two weeks on this show. We're not going to have a show next week. It is Halloween next week and we will be prepping for the charity marathon. Uh, Night force action report. will be back on Tuesday. Uh, but top video game podcast we'll see you in wow we'll see you in November for that so chat thanks again for your answers and participating in the show and Coop thanks for jumping on here tonight you we will see you next time <laughs>